Now, that brings us to the 18th chapter, and actually the 18th chapter here is a chapter that this one and the next, you wonder why it's included in the Bible, actually, until you get to the New Testament. And I think we'll see why later on. And this is, of course, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, will you notice, it's a rather lengthy chapter. Well, I say lengthy, 33 verses. But I'm going to hit now some high points in this chapter, and probably in the next chapter also. But this is very important to see. You see in chapter 18 what could be called a blessed life, and you could see in chapter 19 down in Sodom and Gomorrah a lot blasted life all because of a decision that was made. Now, I'm reading verse 1 of chapter 18, and here God tells Abraham about the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham's intercession on behalf of the cities of the plain. And this is an illustration, I think, of blessed Christian life in fellowship with God. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tenth door in the heat of the day. You see old Abraham down there now in memory. He's an old man, by the way. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tenth door and bowed himself toward the ground. Notice the hospitality that Abraham extends. Now, the little story I told last time, you see, has a basic of fact, at least. I don't think it ever took place, but the point is this man was a very gracious, hospitable man. And he said, My Lord, if now I found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Now, you see what he's doing. Of course, that seems very strange to tell a stranger that comes to see you, wash your feet and come in. We wouldn't quite say that today. But that was an old, probably the oldest custom that is known. Remember, yonder in the upper room, our Lord washed the disciples' feet. Has a tremendous spiritual message there. And here you see Abraham says, wash your feet. That is a token of real hospitality, is when someone comes into your home, and takes off their shoes, their feet are washed. And by the way, in that day, they didn't take off their hat, but they did take off their shoes. Today, we've reversed it. You come in to visit somebody, leave your shoes on, and take off your hat. I'm not sure which is right. I like the idea myself of taking off shoes. I like to go in summertime barefooted. I wish it were possible. When I'm out in the Hawaiian Islands, I put my shoes up, and I wear these little thongs about and go barefooted as much as possible. I don't even put my shoes back on the whole time I'm there. I'd love to go barefoot. I think this was a great custom. It sure made you feel at home to take off your shoes and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Abraham's really entertaining them royally. And he says, I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened unto the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the herd. And Abraham ran unto the herd, fetched a calf, tender and good, gave it unto a young man, he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf, which he addressed, set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Isn't that a marvelous way of entertaining in such a royal way? But we'll have to leave off there, and we'll join Abraham's party next time. Now, if you have the notes and outlines that we send out, follow along with us. We're in the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. And as we said last time, as we entered this chapter, it seems that chapter 18 and 19 are rather detached from the story of Abraham. You wonder why it's put in here. 
but it actually is very important in many ways, which we'll have to reserve for a later date to talk about. But we find in chapter 18, we're with Abraham, and we see here a picture of what a blessed Christian life could be. And then in chapter 19, you can see actually when we go down to Sodom and join Lot down there, what a blasted Christian life is. And unfortunately, we have today both kinds among Christians. There are those today that have made really shipwreck of their lives. They have gotten entirely out of the will of God. And I wouldn't even suggest for a moment they've lost their salvation, but they sure lost everything else. And as Paul says that they are saved so...